Hi, I'm making this video to cover um, what I consider to be the best iPad apps for designers and uh, for creativity in general. It is by no means coverage of all uh, design apps, but it's the ones that I use and that I've discovered and that I find useful. So I hope you enjoy it. The first app is not really a design app, it's kind of an assistant app and it's called AstroPad. So I'm not going to be able to demonstrate it here because I'm actually recording my iPad screen on my Mac, so it's not going to work. But basically what AstroPad allows you to do is to mirror your, your, your Mac screen onto your iPad so that you can use your iPad as, an, as a device to control your Mac. And so you could, for example, open up Photoshop and then view your Photoshop screen on your iPad and work on it. And you can do this uh, wirelessly. So you could have your Mac open in one room. You could go and sit on the couch and use AstroPad to work in Photoshop on your iPad. Um, you can also use AstroPad to turn your iPad into something like a Wacom tablet uh, so that you can use pressure sensitivity if you have something like um, the Apple Pencil. Um, or some other pressure sensitive stylus to actually draw and use your iPad as a tablet. So AstroPad is really a nice way for you to mirror what's going on on your Mac screen onto your iPad. One word before I get into the actual apps and that's about input devices. So of course the iPad was originally designed for finger input and uh, most of us don't really enjoy drawing with our fingers. Um, it's kind of a last resort. So, so most people will look for some kind of uh, input device that uh, is similar to a pencil or a pen. I have tried many over the years. Um, the first ones that came out with the original iPads were what, what are called passive um, styli, which basically just have a rubber tip um, that you can draw. So then we had a generation of Bluetooth um, or active devices, which means that they actually communicate with the iPad and um, try and create things like pressure sensitivity. I have tried quite a few, some of them more successful than others, but I have to say that since I got the Apple Pencil, it has taken this concept to a whole new level, and the Apple Pencil is head and shoulders above all other input devices that I've used. It really feels natural, it's very responsive, and it, it really makes you feel like you are actually drawing with a pencil or pen or some kind of drawing or painting device directly on your screen. So there are many different applications for iPad that fall into the general category of design. And I split them into, for me, a number of categories. One is drawing, Another one is designing using vector. Another one is 3D. And then the fourth one is web design. So the first one I'm going to look at is drawing. And I have many, many drawing apps. In fact, I'm a bit obsessive about collecting them. Um, and that's the great thing about the iPad is that the apps are cheap. So things like uh, 53 by paper, it's a very nice drawing app. It's, it's kind of simple to use. Um, so here is uh, my grid of a few of the drawings that I've done in paper, or at least in 53. And it's kind of expanded so that you can now do things like take photos and add them in and create sort of concept booklets, which is pretty nice. Another drawing app is um, Sketches, which is a Japanese effort. And the nice thing with this is there is a desktop version for your Mac as well. Um, it has some nice drawing tools along the side, and it's actually a pretty decent drawing app. ArtRage is another one. ArtRage has really uh, attempted to create a, a sort of realistic version of all the analog tools that you would use as an artist. And they've done a pretty good job of it, and, and also they have an excellent desktop app as well. As a, so this is kind of a companion app to the desktop app. Okay, and then there's some others like Art Studio 
and sketchbook. But the one that actually, if you're, if you're wanting to draw and if you're an artist, that you absolutely must have is Procreate. So Procreate is the one that has all the tools that you need if you're going to be drawing in a traditional sense of drawing and painting and sketching and so on. So here's just some examples of work that I've done in Procreate. There's one and uh, here's another one. So basically you can express your own style with Procreate and if I go to a new canvas you'll see that you have um, sketching, inking, painting, airbrush tools. You can go into one of these tools and you can actually design it to work exactly how you want to. You have a smudge tool. So if I take that, I can smudge. You have an eraser. You have layers. You have your colors. You can create swatches. You have a brush size. You have opacity. And you have so much more. It's a very deep app. And in fact, that would probably be the only criticism I could level at this. It's not a criticism for me, but for some people, they might find it a bit overwhelming in terms of the options and possibilities. But if you're an artist, this is the app that you should be using. And it works absolutely beautifully with the Apple Pencil as well. So that's Procreate. And that's the app that I would recommend for drawing and sketching. For vector design, surprisingly, Adobe has not brought out anything that is a proper vector design application yet. They have a whole lot of little applications that do things like allow you to draw with rulers and draw freehand and draw in vector lines, but they're not proper de vector design programs. The two vector design programs that I'm going to focus on are graphic and concepts. So if you're wanting to create um, vector design similar to how you would in Illustrator, then Graphic is the program that you should be using. So Graphic, if I just make a new document, you'll see that it actually has a layout that's very similar to a desktop application. It has tools running down the left hand side. So if I wanted to create a logo or something like that, I can literally just draw shapes. I can control those shapes from, from my properties panel here. I can arrange them. Pretty much all the tools that you would need for vector design. If I wanted to make a copy of this and then select both of them together and do something like uh, use a Pathfinder operation to create a new shape. It has all of that stuff and I'm actually pretty impressed with it. The good news also is that there is a desktop app called Graphic and it's almost identical to this just with a little bit more functionality so you can switch between your iPad and your desktop app using something like Dropbox so that you have a very small learning curve between the two so in terms of that I, I really like it and I'm very surprised that Adobe has not uh, pushed forward to create something in the category of vector design for the iPad I think Adobe might be a little bit scared that if they do something really awesome for the iPad that people will stop buying their desktop apps because uh, Adobe's apps really are uh, on the iPad are really about doing little things like making a brush and creating a, a wireframe um, and stuff like that. They, they seem to be shying away from giving you a total design solution on the iPad. Uh, maybe that will change over time. Okay, so for vector design, I would recommend graphic. For vector drawing, and just concept uh, sketching. There's an app called Concepts, which I am absolutely mad about at the moment. It is a fantastic app and it is a very new way of looking at drawing with vector. So here's uh, my little book of some of the stuff that I've done there. Um, and it's not, it's not a precision drawing application. It's not something you would design a finished logo in, but it's something that you might want to use to create a concept for a logo. So I'm just going to make a new canvas and you'll see that you have these ports running along the right hand side and if I tap on any one of those ports and then go to the name of the tool I have these different tools to choose from. There's not a lot of tools but there's enough. So if I choose say my marker then I can go to my colors and it brings up the whole Copic color library which is great and choose my color then I can choose the size of my marker I can choose the opacity 
and I can choose the smoothness of my stroke. So if I take that down, and then I do a stroke, the really great thing is because it's vector, I can then select that stroke, and I can go back to smoothness, and I can actually adjust the smoothness of that stroke until eventually it becomes a straight line and go back again. And that's pretty awesome. I mean, I've, I haven't seen that in any other iPad app. It does have some precision tools. So if I click on the precision button, I can choose, for example, to create an arc. And I can adjust that arc and then draw over it. So there is a little bit of precision, but it's not by any means designed to be a vector design application. It's called Concepts, and that is a very good description of what it's about. And I'm very excited about where this application is going to go in the future. <clears throat> okay, so that is uh, vector design applications, and those are the two that I would recommend, Graphic and Concepts. In terms of 3D, there is no app that I'm aware of at the moment that gives you the power to actually model 3D objects using traditional modeling tools or mesh modeling tools. Maybe there is. I've looked around. I haven't found any yet. But, but I have found two apps that are interesting. One is called Umake. And this one, let me just make a new document. This one uh, has a very interesting approach to 3D and I think has a lot of potential. So this is what the interface looks like. So if I go to an orthographic view, and I just sketch out something. I can then rotate that in 3D space and I can do stuff to it. So if I select that, I can go to the control points and I can control the vector points. I can also go to, say, um, this tool and I can extrude that out. I can also skin it with um, with a surface. So it has a lot of potential and it's also kind of a prototyping or concept tool as well. I think it's got a lot of potential. The only drawback for me is that to, to buy the full version where you get access to all the tools, you need to sign up for a subscription and I'm not prepared to do that for an iPad app. I don't mind having a subscription a model for Adobe Creative Cloud because you're getting a lot for that and the pricing is good. But I don't think iPad apps need to be going in the direction of subscription. So I have actually communicated with the developers and they have said that they're going to be revising their pricing structure. So I look forward to that. And that's one of the great things about iPad apps is that the developers are usually very welcoming of use, user input. Um, quite, quite often the developing team is just one person. So it's really nice to be able to have that direct communication with the developer and be able to talk to them about the things that you want in the future in their apps. Okay, so that's Umake. And the second one that I want to look at is called 123D Sculpt. And this is kind of the iPad equivalent of ZBrush. It's made by Autodesk and it allows you to start off with just think of this as a piece of clay, basically. And you can start to shape it. And once you're happy with the shape, you can then bake it. And from there, you can sculpt it. So if I go to the Sculpt Tools here, I can start to to actually sculpt it as though it's a piece of clay. And let's go to Okay, so if ever you've used ZBrush or Mudbox or program like that, this is really an iPad equivalent. And it's really fun to work with and it's also quite useful. You know, you can work on little aspects of a 3D scene and then you can output them as a mesh. Uh, and continue working in a proper 3D program like Maya or Cinema 4D or 3D Studio Max. Um, so it's a pretty decent app. Um, there is really nothing at the moment on the iPad that allows you to do things like creating a, a basic mesh and then beveling and extruding and 
connecting and all of those construction tools that you have in a program like 3D Studio Max. But this is uh, an interesting start. Okay, and then finally, web design. Um, the only things that I use and have found um, for uh, web design is an, an Adobe application called Adobe Comp, which allows you to create wireframes and basic layouts. It's not a web design program. This could be for print or anything else, but basically it's a good starting point. So here's an example of a little um, layout that I started creating uh, for my next website and um, I've done this much in Adobe Comp. The great thing about this is I can then send this over to my desktop applications like InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, Muse. It is quite limited. It's certainly not a total design solution. You also have some coding applications like Codemaster and Text-tastic. And these allow you to do your coding on the iPad, but there isn't anything that I've found yet that rivals something like Dreamweaver, where you can actually code, get your code hints, and watch your web page being built. So yeah, there's a lot of ways that you can create assets and elements of a web page in on the iPad, but there's no total design solution as yet. For me, I think that that's going to be coming in the future. Now that we have a larger iPad screen and we have the iPad Pro, which has starting to get to desktop level um, power and capabilities, I think those apps are going to start streaming in and increasing their capabilities. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick rundown on my favorite apps for designers for the iPad. Uh, see you next time.